Hello and welcome to All My Art and Soul. Today is Abstract Art Journal Series number four. And uh, I'm working with yellow and orange and just a little bit of turquoise, as you can see. Uh, these are my supplies that I'm using for this page. Uh, the Catalyst, which is a big part of this page. And as I discover more of what I like it to do or I want to do with it, we'll be seeing more of these tools. And uh, as, again, as things happen by accident, I was just, just had a thought, well, what if, you know, I had some leftover paint and I just turn the page, as you can see, another page is drawing there on the left. And I love gray, yellow next to uh, graphite. So I just started and I thought, well, this is gonna be the page for this week. The one there that you don't see, just, um, it just didn't, it just wasn't working. And uh, instead of wasting it, I will be using it as uh, some collage paper. So um, thinking of those horizontal areas, this is a beautiful light gray that I found already pre-mixed. Yes, we can make our own, but I just love this one. And these are the watercolor, uh, water-soluble pastels by Karen Dash. Um, they're wonderful. And I started using them in my other series, but stopped. So I thought, well, this piece really needs them. This is a piece of tissue paper that I'm using to blot or lift any excess water. And um, it didn't work so well. So I'm just going to use ordinary um, uh, paper from now on. So as you can see again, um, this is a piece of birch bark. And I collect all sorts of things uh, from nature, objects, anything that would be really cool. I've always wanted to uh, put this in a piece. And you'll see I use a second one and I've, I've taken it off of a very thick layer of birch bark so it would glue down. Now it doesn't like to glue down totally flat, but that's okay. And so as I'm deciding, um, I'm really liking the differences that I'm creating. Uh, the section down below is very light, the very bottom section, and then the mixture of gray and the yellow oxide. And now I've decided this is the spot where it needs to go. Just because uh, the surrounding color of this piece of birch, of this collage piece from nature, uh, is similar. And I've always loved the horizontal lines on, um, the, very abstract on the birch bark. And I know a lot of people, depends where you live, so this is uh, northern, central northern Ontario in Canada, and we've got lots of those. So this is the handmade papers, and what I did is I really liked how how transparent it is. So I'm going to put those on the bottom. And sometimes I like the torn edge, and sometimes you like um, a nice crisp edge. It all depends. And I'll put that crisp edge on the edge of the paper or the page so it can have some uniformity. Um, but the third piece I want to put on a different plane, a higher plane. And you see when I moved it up, overlapped it, it looked better because it's showing off the transparency. It's, it's giving that more interest below. Um, looking at this piece now while I'm, you know, looking for materials, um, it did end up looking a lot like my Of Earth and Sky. Sometimes you'll find it takes a while for your process to switch or transition into something else. And, so, and, and that's the purpose of this sketchbook, of this uh, 
abstract art journal, I should call it. And um, it's very important to do that. And what I'm finding tricky to get out of is, well, why does every, every page that I produce, it doesn't necessarily need to become something. We're just exploring here. Um, I could just be exploring how different layers look over drawing, over graphite, and see how that looks. Write some notes beside it. And if I really like how something is working, I would incorporate that into uh, a piece later on down the road, or a page. So I'm emulating the here the horizontal marks from the birch bark. And um, just in this little section here. And I really love the uh, swirls. So I've been using a lot of circles in my work. But it's nice to get away. It's still round, of course. But nice to get away from that. This is another beautiful piece. I have to find some more of these papers. I'm starting to run low. And... It's looking great there because of the subtle differences and it's close to the white that's already there um, as the paper. And I didn't gesso this page this time. I'm finding, um, uh, I don't really like uh, gessoing the page first. It's doing something to the texture. I don't know, I and, and it limits. I can't use my watercolor to start with. So as you progress and experiment and explore more, you'll find the same. But we need to make sure we notice these things. So that's another piece of handcrafted paper. And they come in very large sheets, so one sheet, you know, depending on how much you use them, can last a long time. Now I'm finding, so I love the contrast, but I, it, it doesn't end up on this page. I don't really, it doesn't, it just, it's just not working. So I end up putting it to the side. And this paper is slightly thicker than the uh, regular mixed media Canson. This is 140 pound, I believe, something like that, uh, but not as thick as that watercolor one that I really, really love. And of course, my store, my Michaels up here, they didn't have any watercolor. And you only get 30 pages versus 50 pages, which is okay. So this is a... Um, uh, collage paper that I created just by rolling uh, with the brayer different warm tones across it with a little bit of black and why does it fit right there because it's it has similar grays and it is different but I'm putting it where the contrast is a little less and I'm leaving that big white space in the middle, which in the end, I end up putting that little piece of turquoise. So see how the birch bark peels? It's so cool. And underneath, you get this fresh, very orangey, peachy color. So I figured, why not, if one's working, put one more. And I love this alternating with the spaces, how it draws the eye down and around. So in this way, it's really emulating uh, a landscape. I'm still trying to find that where that piece might go. So while I'm pausing, um, some more line work uh, with the China marker would have been good. Um, maybe going vertically in some areas rather than horizontally. And uh, so as I'm putting, it's okay that piece, 
But see, it's too similar to the long rectangular piece below it. So I'm thinking it needs something solid. It needs something dark. But uh, so I end up using a circle up there, like I usually do, <clears throat> in a black. Now, th this is just uh, copy paper. So that's sort of like a leaf shape stenciling around it so you're making an open shape. Um, I was going to put those in, I thought, no, that's just too much. But looking at it now, it, it would have been really cool. But instead, I needed something high contrast, but not dark, just a stronger value of orange. And these papers are made with my jelly printer, uh, just putting different oranges on top, just plain, and then lying a uh, newsprint paper, I believe this is, and then just having a large selection of nice solid um, uh, values rather than using uh, colored paper, which I don't like. So you're getting on this, you can't see it up close, but a little bit of uh, the, the acrylic paint texture on them. And I really like the overlap. Nice. So this piece is working because it's solid and it's thinner, which is different from all the other sections there. Now, uh, remember last week I painted some tissue paper, stamped, and I'm really excited to use this uh, because it's so transparent. Now, does it? can you really see the transparency? I'm still trying to find the best spot for this thing. Yes, I really like that. I remembered I was searching around earlier, but it was just white underneath. Ah, nice. Nope, not quite, so I'm putting it to the side. <laughs> it's so funny how you change your mind. So the shape of this thing needed a, yes, right there, right there. It's so funny. And of course, the line, that p little piece of black on the upper left-hand part of it, it's pretty cool. And of course, that's made from my, uh, sponge cylinder that I can cut so easily with scissors. It's just packing material. And of course, there I go trying to put that piece on, but it's too dark and the eye stays there. So the viewer does, can't get out of that spot. This is a uh, painted tissue paper. It's very thin and delicate. And you have to be careful when you're gluing it down because it will tear. So, yes, it looks much better there. So that's why I'm ordering the uh, deli paper for journaling from Amazon. It's still, it's on its way. It still hasn't arrived yet. I can't wait to start using that. So this is starting to come together now with the cruciform um, composition. Now the orange is okay but it's still too close to the orange below. It, it just needs black. Now, looking at it again, now while I'm doing my voiceover, probably a, just a darker gray uh, from the background in the top would have been better. But you see, you can always go in later, fix it, put a piece of collage over something you don't like, and then again, paint over it, or stamp or stencil over it, and then you add more layers, and it just adds to the piece. So there I go, and I just should have been a little more delicate with that, but I do love it. Just a little less dark, I think, would have been better. Now, I try to fix that one little spot and I should have left it there because now it's pretty thick. 
but you can let it dry. Um, then I could have did a gray, oh, I, I might do a gray over the top. And this is this, these, this interesting stencil. So it's emulating crack, crackling, age, all sorts of things. I thought, yes, I needed a little bit more black, but not too much down below to give it some weight. And I really, really like how it overlaps. So don't forget about overlapping. It doesn't have to be um, large areas of overlapping, but overlapping is um, something we want to pay attention to as well. So I hope you enjoyed Abstract Art Journaling number four. And there's the turquoise piece there in the middle. It just needed it. And I'll see you in the next video. Don't forget to subscribe and share. Thank you.